Okay, we're going today to go over lines uh, 384 to 425. So it's going to be a little bit longer of a video. It's about 40 lines worth. Um, so it's quite a while, uh, but we're going to manage regardless. Uh, Aeneas is going to be meeting Charon and Cerberus today. So it's a big, big moment for him as he's going through everything. And, and Air for Air goes there for uh, Inter. I'm going to try and go pretty quickly here. Um, they, uh, Peregrims, they finished, they accomplished being uh, the Sibyl and Aeneas, their journey having been started, and they approached the fluvio. This is a dative with uh, this verb, uh, propinquo, and a propinquo, same word pretty much, um, which is to approach. Uh, so they approached the uh, river. Um, this is like the river. Uh, that was discussed about earlier. The Nawita, this is the uh, the ferryman, Kara. Eos is the equivalent for close, which is this is an accusative subject. And ut is an as, so an adverb, and then un indes. Now from there, as the Nawita prospects it, he noticed that they, ere is our first infinitive and indirect statement here. That they go per tacitum nemus through the quiet grove from the uh, Stygian wave is is ablative that goes with prospexit. And this infinitive and indirect statement in this accusative direct dot, they turn their feet to the riverbank. So notice he saw them coming approach approaching them and he says thus uh, sooner. Um, he aggreditor, he addresses uh, ablative dictis is an ablative of means with words and increpa ultra. And further, he increpa is a weird word because it's more like to reprove, which is just to like to chide them. He's kind of reproaching them. Um, in, in other words, he's kind of scolding why are they coming. And that's what we're going to find out here in these next uh, few lines as Charon begins to talk. And he starts off with quiz quiz s, whoever you are, armatus, who armed, uh, this is a, uh, a main verb with two as a sub, uh, who armed you, stretched ad flumina nostra, fare age, come, speak, these are both imperatives, it's a double imperative, this age is more like, uh, not do, but come. And then he says, quid venias. This is an uh, indirect question, an IDQ, which we don't see many of. Um, what do you come for, he says. It's a subjunctive verb. Uh, and this tendus isn't an MV, it's an RCV, relative clause verb. Now from there, et comprime is another imperative. Uh, compress the step, your step. And he's like, repress it. Hey, don't come closer. Umbrarorum hic locus est. This locus est umbrarorum is of shades. At somni, of sleep, and of sleepy night. All these genitives go with locus because he's describing what this place is. This place of death. It's a place of shades, of sleep. The idea of death is you're asleep forever. Um, go figure. And Corpora viva, nefas carina stigia vectare. Here's our main verb. We have to add the word est. Uh, it is not permitted to carry living bodies in this Stygian. or with a Stygian ship. So in other words, he says, it's not allowed to allow people who are alive to be on a boat of death. Go figure. He begins to talk about 
three characters who were able to go in the underworld, and he says, Nec vero, nor tri in truth, nor truly. Uh, me sum litatus, this is our main verb. It's uh, Litatus is litor, which is from litus to be happy. So he says, I did not, nor did I rejoice. That, this is going to introduce an indirect statement. Me is an accusative subject, so I accepted. This accusative direct object, al Qaedan, is Hercules. A yuntum comes from ire to go, and this is a PAP, so going in the in the marsh or in the lake, avid of a place where. Nor accepted a Theseus and Perithus. So Hercules, we know, went to the underworld. Theseus and Perithus, they also went to the underworld, these other heroes, and he's going to tell us a little bit about what both of those characters did. Charon, he mentions something, he says, although, it's kind of adverb, adverbial phrase, this is a genitive of the day, uh, this is of the gods, um, or from gods, I would say more of an ablative of source, from, and it goes with this word genity, which is a PPP, that's nominative, um, born from gods, and unconquered, uh, I guess it's a PPP is also an adjective, and they were unconquered, and this is an ablative of, of, of means, I guess, by men. Ile, this is going to refer to Hercules, this is nominative. He sought um, with his hand in in chain, in a chain. Uh, he sought uh, the Tartarian uh, uh, guard, the uh, guard of Tartarus, um, and dragged the guard trembling from the throne of the king himself, and this is the king of of the underworld from Pluto. These being Theseus and Theseus and Perithus, these adorti, we need to add the word sun for this main verb. They attempted to abduct the queen of Pluto or the mistress of Pluto, being Proserpina, from her bedchamber, her thalamus. In other words, he, uh, uh, Theseus and uh, Perithus, they tried to save Proserpina, but the problem is they got stuck in the underworld. They weren't able to save her, but Ile, the Hercules, he actually ends up saving them on his way out of the underworld with Cerberus. Quai is hike this against which Braviter. Amphysia Wates. This is the Sybil, the character walking with Aeneas, spoke. Fata S is a deponent main verb. And she begins to tell her Nulla insidia tale sunt. We have to add sunt here with these nominatives. There is no here, hic is an adverb. Here, there is no such uh, insidia. There's no um, such treachery here. Stop to be moved, she tells him. Stop so you can uh, you know, look at what's about to happen. Nor weapons bring violence. It is permitted plus oot. The book I see has a great note about this. We need to add you, uh, not you, oot with leket um, to make a purpose clause. It is permitted so that the ingens yanitor um, in the uh, cave. Um, PAP nominative, barking for eternity, 
or barking eternally, terrifies exsanguis umbras, terrifies uh, bloodless shades, uh, lifeless uh, ghosts. It is permitted, plus oot, that um, pure proserpina serwet, she serves the threshold for this dative of uh, reference for uh, patrui um, oh I'm sorry not a dative this is a genitive serves the uh, threshold of her uncle um, guess what her dad or her mom and Ceres or Demeter is related to Pluto uh, their sis siblings and also uh, uh, her father being Jupiter, uh, it's only fair that um, she she's kind of taking care of her own. Weird. Trojan Aeneas, though, in Cygnus, remarkable or um, uh, distinguished ablative of descriptions in Pietas, that really important virtue in arms. So... Uh, she's going to talk a little bit about Aeneas now and why they should go. She's saying, hey, you know, we're not going to steal away Proserpina, and we're not going to bother the um, Cerberus, so just, you know, bear with this guy. You know, don't, don't worry. She says, you know, he, Trojan Aeneas, he descends ad umbras imas to the uh, furthest shades of Erebos to his father. So Aeneas, his goal is to go see his dad. Si nula tantai pietas imago moete. If no image of such great pietas moves you, doesn't move you, if no image moves you, but agnoskas is the next main verb, and I'm skipping a little bit. Ramam hunch. This is so important that Ramam hunch comes first. Because what she does is she takes out this branch or this bow, B O U G H, and the symbol, a parrot, she reveals the bow the branch, which was hiding in her clothes. You recognize this, she said. Ex ira tum corde, tum corda tumida residuum. Um, then the, out of anger, the um, swelling heart settles. So she's able to kind of settle down this guy who's kind of, he's building himself up. He's getting angry. And she, you know, she just like, it's like she's wearing a trench coat. She goes, you remember this guy? And he just kind of quiets. Nake plura his, nor uh, plura is a nominative. And we have to add the word dicta sunt. Nor uh, very many things have been said as this. This is a comparative ablative. So you can just use the word as this. Ile is a nominative, P-A-P ad mirans is a nominative, and this is an adverb, venerabile. Uh, um, actually, it could be the, um, uh, the, an accusative as well. I think I like it as an accusative direct object of our P-A-P. Uh, that one, admiring the venerable gift having been seen, It's the, it's the gift of um, the faded stick, or whatever. After a long time, you know, he saw it. He adverted, he turned to the blue ship and he approached the riverbank. From there, alias animas is our accused of direct object with this word deterbot. He drives off uh, some spirits from there. 
um, who were sitting through the long yuga are yokes or mountain ridges, but here it really is like benches through the long benches of the ship. And he loosens or he frees the gangways, uh, the way to get onto the ship. So he's only going to allow um, uh, Aeneas and the Sibyl to join in on the ship on this journey. At the same time, he accepted in the ship, or for the ship, I guess, a uh, huge Aeneas. And under the weight, the ship groaned. This is a nice personification because uh, it's a great way to describe how the ship, it, it's groaning in the sense that it's like creaking and stuff. And in a groan, we've seen a lot of groaning in this book and a lot of groaning in Caesar. But um, it's a great, great way to describe how heavy Aeneas is compared to shades and ghosts. And he describes this bow as sutilis and ramosa. It is sewn and filled with uh, cracks. This bow accepts uh, a lot of the swamp. In other words, it starts to take on a little bit of water. Or not a little, but a lot of water. Finally, Transfluium in columis uh, in formulimo glaucaque exponent in ulua. Um, safe and unharmed, um, he inform me, uh, I'm sorry, uh, he exponent, here's our main verb. He disembarks the soothsayer and the man from, uh, or in the shapeless uh, limo, uh, which is like a mud or slime. Uh, so this is like an ablative uh, place where. And the glauca ulua. And in this block is a weird word. In this gray um, sedge, marsh grass. So they just disembark. They they cross the river finally and safely. Uh, they he disembarks them. Here we see Cerberus, ingots, huge persona. He um, not that like personified, but he sounds through. He makes resound hike regna, this kingdom. With the barking of three throats, or of three-throated barking. Reclining Imanis, like huge, in uh, the opposite cave, or in an opposite cave. In other words, they see him kind of laying down, reclining, you know. Here he is, he's barking a little bit with his three uh, mouths. He's just kind of chilling out there. Kui is a dative, so for whom? It's an indirect object, technically. Um, but you can just use the word for whom. The uh, soothsayer, the sibyl, seeing, plus indirect statement, that now the next shake or uh, tremble with snakes. She obicit. She presents an ophom, a cake. Sporatum. It's um, like 
sprinkled with, I guess, uh, soporatum. Uh, it's drugged with honey and with medicatis frugibus. Um, with uh, medicated um, uh, herbs, I guess. Uh, that's what uh, frugibus are. Um, grains. Uh, those both are all ablatives. Ile, that one. Uh, tria gutura rabida corripit objectum. Um, pondens is a PAP that's nominative. That one, um, spreading open, loose, loosening uh, the rabid three throats. Because of, this is an ablative of cause, so because of hunger, he corripit, he snatches up the object. And Amania terga, his immense um, back, resoluit, he like turns over, he, uh, or lucids, excuse me, his immense back, so he kind of relaxes. Um, Thusis, um, fallen, this uh, PVP is nominative, and fallen, out, this is a locative, kumi, uh, on the ground, and uh, huge, he ex is extended in the whole cave. So, because he gets drugged and they kind of put him to sleep, he takes up the whole thing. Um, seeing a really interesting description of Cerberus here. Aeneas occupat, he uh, seizes the way, the approach, or the entrance, a custode sepultus, an ablative absolute, which we haven't seen one in a while, uh, with the guard having been buried, literally he just got killed, you know, and quick, he evades uh, the, the um, riverbank of the waves of never returning. Of a um, uh, of the waves from which there is no return, uh, he awaited. So he's able to kind of es uh, escape, pass over those things, and and now he's on his way to go see his dad. And he's crossed the big big thing, which is the river and Cerberus. I hope that this was helpful for you guys. I'm sorry if I, I kind of went through things quickly and. I didn't get to explain a lot, but hopefully, you know, you got a chance to pause here and there to catch up. All eight families. Take care.